Hi, welcome to Team Woolly Sheep Reviews and welcome back. Right, as promised, some workshop talks. Back in the 80s, when I was an apprentice, I bought a soldering iron, an Antec soldering iron. So I've had this for for literally donkey's years. Uh, this is a, a mains operated soldering iron. And for doing general soldering, this was actually a fine tip. As you can see, I've had a couple of tips along the way. These are the, the slightly larger tips. So, and these tips, just basically interchangeable, they just push on. As things went along, people wanted to be portable. So along came, you could call this the TS1. This was a gas operated soldering iron. And basically what it did, there was uh, th these tips were interchangeable, but there was a little catalyst in there, which obviously the gas reacted as like a gauze in there, heated up the tip. Not much of a, a temperature regulation. You can see it's been well used. And this was in my toolbox. So as an engineer out on the tools, I would, if I needed to solder something, this was my soldering iron of choice. I did loads of work with this. Slightly posser version, didn't get much use. I don't know how people manage without soldering. How do you manage without soldering? You know somebody you can solder. The type of things you'll need, obviously the solder. You buy the solder. Most of the solder are already fluxed, but some clean flux helps. When you're desoldering, obviously you're putting a lot of heat in. Well, when we were doing a lot of electronics, we wanted to take the heat away, so you'd add a copper braid. Yeah. And this would actually take the heat away. And because it's copper, it would absorb the solder and to desolder a joint. So we used to use braid for desoldering. Solder suckers become more more popular. This is the the newer design. And basically, you'd heat up the solder, press the button, and sucks up the solder into there. And then you've got to try and get the solder out. You can unscrew it and clean it. So good maintenance keeps these going. A good solder sucker was dependent on how much pressure to press that button to release. Because you were desperately trying to press the button and hold it on the on the job and oh, and sometimes it would move, jump off. And so they made the buttons quite sensitive. So a lot of suction, little little press of the button. So these have been wrong for years. If you want to get into soldering and you're watching this video, then look for a a solder sucker because they're going to serve you well. Solder, oh my god, oh my god. This solder is 6040, 6040 lead and tin. That's 60% tin and 40% lead. I hope I got that the right way around. As people become more aware, the objective was to get away from the lead because as you're soldering, the, the fumes and the smoke, the lead, not good fume, and it drives you a little bit mad. Apparently. But then along comes the variants, 6337. But what you'll soon find is that different solders have different solder flow characteristics. And what I mean by that is that when you're soldering, is some of them a lot easier to use. The idea when you're soldering is that you tin the iron, make sure there's solder on the iron. You put the iron on what you want to solder and then you add the solder, then you take the iron and the solder away and the joint should be nice and flowed and smooth and everything should be lovely. But then you look at some people soldering and they look like they've got bloody pigeon shit all over the place. It's, you think, how can they get in such a state? A lot of it is not always your fault. A lot of it is some of this cheap ass crap solder. You're, you're soldering, it's an alloy and you're there soldering and it's melting, but it's all very chunky and horrible. So this makes a big difference. When you're using this, you've got to get, if the temperatures are critical and a good flux is essential. So, lots of solders, lots of choice. Find a solder that works for you. Lots of practicing, get it on, iron on, solder, iron off, iron on, solder, iron off. You shouldn't be on any longer than that for a solder joint. Iron on, 
dab of solder iron off if you're there doing any more you're going to start causing damage and things are going to go badly wrong so try and keep that one two iron on solder iron off no longer than that and it won't go far wrong believe me many moons ago when i got into this hobby i decided i needed a better soldering iron so i went along to my local electronics hobby store and i bought one of these nice soldering iron instead of mains voltage now there's a power supply in there so these were 24 volt and temperature control there's a thermostat in there and this this control box controls the temperature of the iron worked quite well then the iron went maplins that i bought if the people who i bought it from had gone bust they'd gone through so when my soldering station failed me i went back to the main soldering iron i'm trying to solder boards like this it was doable but it was like going at it with a salt with a sledgehammer so this was okay got me by i happened to be on amazon and I noticed Antex is still going. So I had a look at what soldering stations are available by Antex. And it just so happens they were on offer. There was a sale on. Oh, so I managed to get one reduced. It's my main soldering station. So we'll have a look at it. So this is my where most of my soldering happens, believe it or not. And this is my soldering station. It's the Antex 690D soldering station and this is a nice bit of kit as you can see it's quite a solid forget that my um, Darth Vader uh, mains power via an IEC plug some people like to call them kettle leads and it's quite easy to, to use as you can see there's two buttons and it's got marked up and down and that's the temperature up and down comes with a handset and base turn it on and you can see that's reading an active temperature if you press the up button it takes over and that's that's going to 390 degrees centigrade so that temperature of the tip is climbing to 390 degrees centigrade i haven't checked how accurate that temperature is what i do is i solder if i feel that it needs to be hotter i just turn the temperature up if i'm starting to use if i'm using it for battery plugs then I might turn it up and go up into 400s so good bit of kit like I said don't really like too much on the temperature gauge is a, a reference only I haven't checked the accuracy see there's that that lead fumes I was talking about so you're not supposed to breathe that that smoke in because it's got lead in it not good lead free is the way to go so lead free is the the new standards and everybody should be using lead free solder uh, to do all their soldering 60 40 lead and tin is a thing of the past i'm not going to give you a soldering lesson because <laughs> i know you'll only take the mic so what i wanted to show you is the Antex 690D solder station. It is expensive, there's a cheaper version of it, but this is good. And that is the Antex 690D. I use that all the time, it's good, recommended. Now, if your eyes are crap like mine, what I found is I can wear them with my glasses or without my glasses. You can, you can alter to get it in focus. I had different strength ones, but I found this was ideal. But when you solder in you want to be about there and these are focused there so get yourself one of them you're gonna need it another thing I use a lot a loop and you see the jewelers using these and they are if you've got a circuit board and you've got problems you'd be amazed what you can see when you get in up close where you've splashed solder joints are bridged little jewelers loop very inexpensive but absolutely fabulous for doing soldering It didn't actually give it justice, but it actually seems a lot closer than that. And you can really have a look at that joint and go, oh, I've got to redo that again. So that was handy, but obviously wearing glasses, it's not quite as easy. But it does work. 
you can get right in you can see oh look at this oh no look this all the splashes blue tack we call it i don't know what you call it elsewhere in the world but we know it is blue tack and it's basically you, you pull off a little blob of it and then you can stick paper on the wall with it and it just stays like putty and uh quite often i'll use a blob of blue tack and if i was soldering obviously you don't want to apply heat to it so i would stick it to the board stick it on the desk so if I was say soldering this board, I could be soldering away. And because it's blue tack, I can mold it and shape it to the, whatever position I wanted to. And a big chunk of it has got a bit of ballast, so you wouldn't be keen to move. You can get the helping hands with the crocodile clips. You can get these type of things, which you can clip on, which are fine, but that's what happens. And you go to solder and it's moving and you're forever trying to do with the soldering and it's moving so they're handy good for holding wires and bits and bobs but i find a bit of blue tack and that's good to go and because it's a nice nice solid weight of blue tack you can stick it into place and you can solder till the cows come home so let's go back to the main bench so if you're looking to get a soldering station then you won't go far wrong with one of these and i'll put a link to this below on ebay several brands it's an unbranded model i'll put the link to this below and i'll also have a look and put the link to amazon they're quite pricey they're quite expensive so it's up to you if you're going to plan to do a lot of soldering then it's worth paying it there's lots of other manufacturers you can pay five six hundred pound for a soldering station get what suits you this is i think the these are a lot cheaper I paid about £100 for this at the time and I'm pretty sure you can buy the whole shooting match for under 50 so if you're doing basic soldering you're not you're not looking to, to solder high power and be putting big plugs on like I said I've gone up to XT90 with these and like I said you've got to turn the temperature up but I've used them to solder some heavy gauge wire some battery leads and if you want to buy one i don't get anything over and just doing it for you i'd like to make a point that all the recommendations i make there's no royalties so i put a link to the product page for you to go and have a look at and buy so don't feel obliged to buy it to support the channel because it doesn't give me anything back as i learn i pass the knowledge on to you guys so what you doing in lockdown? I hope you're fixing everything. I've got two quadcopters there which are, are dying to be repaired. Maybe it's time for me to clear the bench. It's been so long I've got to figure out what was wrong with them. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. And I'm still plodding along. Probably if I had another couple of weeks in isolation I could probably finish most of them. What else would you be doing in isolation? So. Hope you enjoyed watching these videos and there's more to come. So these are the informative videos that I'm making and hope you enjoyed. Speak to you soon. Bye.